put off by how long this video is, don't worry. I tend to jam-pack my videos with as much content, as many details as I possibly can, and I try to talk pretty fast. So while the video is a bit on the long side, I don't repeat myself, and I get into a lot of details about the subject that, you know, pretty much anything that I feel I can comment on and that I think you might find interesting. But hey, if the video is just too long for you to watch, chances are I recorded a shorter version, and the link will be in the description box. It's not an inferior video, it's merely a Cliff's Notes version of this very video. The Spirit Movie View. The Spirit himself. His actual backstory isn't really given until near the end of the film, so I suppose it's a spoiler to give it away. But basically, he is a man who seems invulnerable. He can get hurt, but he heals very rapidly. He is a crime fighter in Central City, which is, I guess, just supposed to be any big city in the U.S. And his main nemesis is the octopus, so named because well, he says that he has eight of everything, but he doesn't even have eight different guns. So I did. He he doesn't actually have eight of everything. He he says that at one point, and then he draws some guns, and I guess it's supposed to be like, oh, he's got eight different kinds of guns from. I, I I'm pretty sure he doesn't. Yeah, I I have no idea. Anyway. He is a bad guy because he's a drug dealer, I think. There's like two mentions of that, and nothing is ever really seen of it. But anyway, yeah. And the octopus is also very hard to kill. And yeah, that's about it. It's, you know... A comic book movie about a guy who fights crime in his city. I should say right off the bat, I have not read the Spirit comic books. In fact, I did not know about them until, you know, the trailer for this came out. And I, in fact, haven't really read any stories by Will Eisner at all. So, yeah. Anyway, basically, this is not going to be an analysis of this film as an adaptation. It is going to be describing how and why it fails as a basic movie, you know, regardless of it being an adaptation of anything else. There's a lot. I'm not entirely sure where to start, but I suppose, as I already mentioned, the spirit is apparently, you know, apparently invulnerable. That right there is a big problem. Even Superman has kryptonite, and, you know, they, they didn't actually come up with that the first time they wrote Superman. They realized later, oh crap, we gotta give this guy some kind of weakness so that, you know, stories can actually have some tension. They kind of forget that part in this one. Maybe something can kill the spirit, but the film doesn't really make clear what it is, and yeah, it just it strips the tension away from basically every scene because yeah, there, there's just there's no way to you know there there's nothing specific for us to fear you know might kill the spirit, and every time he's getting hurt or something, he just yeah we we just kind of figure that he'll get back up, and that'll be that, you know, so, yeah, you know, gone is all tension, and since the action scenes are pretty crap, I, I'm not sure what this really does try to do to draw you in. Now, with him being, you know, seemingly unkillable, it's also really hard to relate to our lead. Doesn't help that he... I don't even know the guy who portrays him, 
And I think it's like his first starring role, and it shows. He is just not at all good at, you know, I, I, I don't know, I mean, I'm not, like, against seeing him something else, but in this, he is terrible. But then again, everybody pretty much is in this. I, I don't think there's really a good performance in this whole thing, and it actually does have, you know, several talented actors. Quite a few of whom probably, you know, signed on because Sin City did well and they wanted in on that kind of action. I really wish that Scarlett Johansson and especially Samuel Jackson could have just waited for, you know, Iron Man 2 and the Avengers. I, I mean, I realized that Jackson really wanted to be in something, you know, comic booky, but yeah. He's utterly unintimidating as a bad guy, and I, I just want you to ponder that for a second. Samuel Jackson as not being intimidating, that really, that takes serious, you know, effort to, to actually accomplish that. Now, the action, as mentioned, quite bad. It, I suppose the closest thing we get to a proper action scene is really, there's this early fight between the spirit and the octopus. I guess they kind of mud wrestle, you could put it like that. They're smashing stuff over each other's heads and this kind of thing. And, and yeah, it is, it's a pointless endeavor because, I mean, sure it hurts, it, it physically hurts them, but we're not sure it really harms them, you know, because yeah, it, we, we already know they are pretty much impervious. I mean, they're, sure, they'll be, you know, their, their body will take damage, but it will heal. So we're just looking at two, you know, people just, yeah, and, and it's not even that exciting. I guess it's kind of played for laughs, but yeah. And there are other bits of, you know, action, I don't know, it's, it's, sometimes it's just these really short stints where you don't even get into it before it's over, and yeah, a lot of the way it's just, there's barely any action in the entire movie, you know, yeah, the, the very beginning and the climax sort of has action, but that is about it. This is Frank Miller's first film, and, you know, the directing, and... It really shows the man is not a film person. He's, he's not a director at all. I like his comics quite a lot. Some of them I love. But the man just cannot. There, I think one of the best examples is this scene where Sam Jackson and Scarlett Johansson as the villain and his right hand woman respectively, are discussing how to proceed. And as stage direction, apparently they were just told, just walk back and forth. And that's literally, they're just in the frame, walking from one side to the other side, back to the first side, both of them passing each other a bunch of times, and that's it. This is remarkably, you know, I mean, I actually have to wonder if even if, if he was just asleep on the job, if like he was just told you, you, you probably should give him some stage direction and he just went with the first thing that popped into his head or something. Even in the comic medium or even in the comic medium, you still need good stage direction. You still need something dynamic to happen. You know, looking at people walking back and forth in a room is just not interesting. And that's also an aspect that this could have gone for, you know, this could have tried to be visually interesting. And sure, it has some, I don't know, images that, some angles, certainly, that are potentially interesting. But in the grand scheme of things, there's almost nothing, almost no... I was about to say eye candy, but actually there is quite a bit of that. Where Sin City already had quite a few dames. 
at least they were kind of... I don't know, here it just feels far more gratuitous. And it's not that it's not, you know, at times it is gratuitous in Sin City, but I don't know, I, at least you're getting into it. In this, it's just, you know, especially with Eva Mendes, who basically, every time she's on screen, is just utterly and completely objectified. You know, there isn't really a movement or a pose or anything she does that isn't, you know, supposed to just, yeah, get, you know, the young male crowd jeering and leering, whatever, something like that. And this is really cheap and, yeah, just not that interesting. And I can appreciate that maybe Frank is a man with a love of women, but so's that guy who, you know, watches the beach from a couple of, you know, hundred feet away through his binoculars, and nobody likes that guy either. And it's actually just about equally creepy with, you know, with both of them. Even death in this film is a sexy woman and you know her embrace is supposed to be like this so she's trying to lure the spirit into her arms and that the 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 city itself is described as a woman endlessly by the spirit who narrates about almost nothing else you know, again, in Sin City, the narration is fantastic. In this, it's almost only droning on about these odd comparisons between the city and a woman. And it just, it comes off, again, as kind of creepy and just strange. Strange is a good word for this film. There is a massive amount of quirk. I think it might be trying to out-quirk NCIS or something. And yeah, it just... Excuse me, it makes the characters... Excuse me, largely impossible to relate to because everyone talks in this way that no one actually talks. The dialogue, in general, almost painful. At points, it's just extremely repetitive. And, yeah, it just, I, I don't think there's a single line that doesn't qualify as being nonsensical and or something that no one would actually say in real life. Yeah. And, like, if, if you actually remember any lines from this movie, it'll be because of how odd they are. I suppose that more or less covers... I should, of course, say this is... This uses a visual style very similar to Sin City. Now, I don't know how appropriate that is for the spirit. But it is, of course, pretty... I mean, when Sin City came out, that was a, you know, compelling visual style, film-wise. And it was exactly what we wanted, having read the comics and wanting to see them put up on the screen. And with this... Again, I, I don't know, I maybe it is fitting, but it just doesn't, it, it, it seems impossible to me that it could be as fitting as it was in Sin City, with, yeah, you know, that was basically just putting the comic frames up on the silver screen. So, yeah. For how many guns... And I suppose even fights, or at least, you know, exchanges of blows there are in this, it is 
remarkably dull and just yeah it's also rather poorly paced even for being slightly under 90 minutes I believe not counting the credits anyway yeah just really terrible in almost every way Please rate and comment, and hey, if you like this video, that subscribe button's just waiting for you to click it.